allow the Palestinian civilian population to reach a safe zone. Mr. Prime Minister, as you know, even those in the South say they do not feel safe. French President Emmanuel Macron has said there is, quote, no justification for the ongoing bombing of civilians. All over the world, you've seen protesters who are calling for an end to civilian deaths in Gaza. Can you win this war without global support? We will win this war because we have no other choice. There's no life for us. There's no future for us and our neighbors if we allow the axis of terror led by Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, and their minions to dominate. We have an alliance for peace on the other side. It includes Israel, the United States, the modern Arab states, and the rest of the civilized world. Now, it's a question, who wins? We have to win. There's confusion in many parts of the uh, of the world. I have to say, not in the United States. I'm glad to see that the the majority of the American people support Israel. They understand that we're fighting the just battle of civilization against barbarism. But those who, uh, those who protest for Hamas, you're protesting for sheer evil. There are a lot of misguided people out there who don't, don't know the facts. You're talking to people who deliberately targeted civilians, who raped and murdered women, who, raped, uh, uh, who, who beheaded uh, men, who burnt babies alive, who kidnapped uh, little babies and, host- and, uh, and Holocaust survivors, you name it. These are the people that you are supporting. Now, you cannot, it's like in World War II, yeah. the Allies are fighting the Nazis, okay? Chancellor Sol- uh, Kohl of uh, Germany said that Hamas are the new Nazis. So imagine now, the Allies are fighting the Nazis. They've been invaded France after they were attacked by the Nazis. They, uh, they go yeah. into the cities of Germany. They're obviously, the Nazis are fighting within civilian quarters, and civilians get killed. In fact, many of them were killed. Millions were killed. And, now, but, who do you protest against? Well, do you and, protest against the Nazis, or do you protest uh, against the Allies? And what these people are doing is protesting for sheer evil. That's wrong. Ms. By the way, it's a condemnation. It's an indictment of higher education in some of our universities. Mr. Prime Minister, as you know, a, a number of the protesters are protesting the actions by Israel, even the Secretary of State saying, quote, far too many Palestinian civilians have been killed. Let me ask you this. How many civilian deaths are you willing to bear in order to achieve your ultimate goal of eradicating Hamas? If I had my way, there wouldn't be a single civilian death. If I had my way, no civilians would be killed. If Israel had its way and our calls would be heeded, they'll all be out of harm's way. And in fact, I'm saying this uh, luckily now, uh, unfortunately, uh, hundreds of thousands have moved out of harm's way, heeding our calls and uh, overcoming uh, Hamas's uh, threats at them at gunpoint, not to do leave you, the zone. Do you of know violence. how many civilians have I, been I think, killed, uh, Mr. Prime Minister? Do you know how many civilians have been killed? Do you have an accounting of the number? I wouldn't trust the Hamas numbers. When you say Gazan officials, that's Hamas officials. What's that's your what number? What's ISIS your number? It, it's lower than theirs. And what is most important, Kirsten, is that we see a, a steady decline in the number of civilian deaths as we uh, our ground action proceeds, because basically people understand that they have to clear the way and they leave. And remember, our goal, and we're taking extraordinary efforts uh, to achieve it, is to minimize civilian casualties. This is our ethos. And uh, here's the problem. We're faced with the most vicious kind of enemy who not only attacks civilians, but commits the other war crime yeah. of deliberately hiding behind their civilians. They use them as human shields. Yeah. They fire on our safe corridors that we give to Palestinian civilians. It's not Israel who's doing that. Yeah. So we have to at once uh, try to focus our uh, our uh, fire on the terrorists, yeah. try to minimize the uh, civilian deaths, but at the same time not give immunity. Because I'll Mr. tell you what will happen, Christian. That'll if this system, you know, the, we'll do everything we can to minimize civilian casualties. But you have to do everything in your power to lay the blame for the civilian casualties uh, on where it belongs on Hamas. We don't want to make human shields an effective strategy for terrorists. Mr. Prime Minister, I have a few more questions to get through, and I know that we're running out of time. So let me keep moving. The U.N. High Commissioner for Human Rights said just this morning that while Hamas has committed war crimes, the collective punishment by Israel of Palestinian civilians amounts also to a war crime. Can you definitively say right now that Israel is not breaking international law? Yes, I can say that what the uh, commissioner said is hogwash, because we're, the, the main difference is, are you deliberately targeting civilians? No, we're deliberately doing everything, everything in our power to target the terrorists and the civilians 
as happens in every legitimate war, are sometimes what are called collateral damage. That's a laundered way of saying unintended casualties. That's clearly what Israel is doing. And what clearly Hamas is doing is the opposite. They're doing everything in their power to have their civilians hurt because they want this uh, ridiculous and wanton attack on Israel, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, on Israel's legitimacy to, uh, to take root. And unfortunately, people are giving into this. If we lose sight, you know, if we lose the moral clarity of supporting the force that is fighting the terrorists that are hiding behind civilians and blaming the, the victim for, the, uh, for uh, these attacks, the victim who takes the just action to defend itself, uh, then uh, we'll never be able to fight the terrorists. Right. They'll always hide behind civilians let and me, we'll never be able to fight them. Let me ask you about Gaza, Mr. Prime Minister. You said Saturday you are opposed to the Palestinian Authority returning to control Gaza after the war, and you say that Israel will control Gaza for as long as is needed. Are you saying that Israel would reoccupy Gaza? And what do you say to those who say there should be an international force that governs Gaza after the war? Well, I think Gaza has to uh, uh, make sure that we, uh, it's not a threat to Israel. We said destroy Hamas, uh, and uh, for that, if we uh, want to have peace, we have to destroy Hamas. This is what Israel uh, must do, and this is what Israel will do. Would you accept but an after, international force, uh, Mr. Prime Minister? Would you accept I, I an think international I'll accept, force? I think that the only force right now that can guarantee that Hamas, that uh, uh, terrorism is not does not reappear and uh, take over Gaza again is the Israeli military. So overall military responsibility will have to be in Israel. As far as the civilian management of Gaza, we need to see uh, the following, two things. Gaza has to be demilitarized and Gaza has to be de-radicalized. Mm -hmm. And I think so far we haven't seen any uh, Palestinian force, uh, including the Palestinian Authority, that is able to do it. Uh, they uh, uh, teach their children to hate Israel. They're not fighting terrorists. They're paying for slay. That is, the more terrorists, uh, uh, Palestinian terrorists murder Jews, the more they get paid. And to this day, 36 days after the worst savagery perpetrated on the Jewish people since the Holocaust, the Palestinian Authority president has yet refuses to condemn this savagery. So, you know, we need a different authority. We need a different administration. Who would that be? be Israeli, Who would that be, Mr. Prime Minister? Who would that be? I, I think it's different? too early to say. I th okay. Kirsten, I think it's too early to say, but I can say one thing. The first task we have to achieve is defeat Hamas. The first task the Allies had to achieve before they could reconstruct Germany was to defeat the Nazis. These, as the German Chancellor said, are the new Nazis. We'll defeat them, and then we'll work to have a demilitarized yeah. and a de-radicalized Gaza, which will give hope to these people. I mean, they're living under 16 years of horrendous, tyrannical rule of Hamas. We'll liberate them and we'll liberate ourselves from, the, from this horror, this scourge of barbarism that plagues not only us. It's not only our war. Kirsten, it's your war, too. It's the war of civilization against barbarism. We have to win it, and very, we will. Very quickly, Mr. Prime Minister, as you know, many of Israel's top military security and political leaders have taken responsibility for the attacks on October 7th. Can you be clear, do you bear any responsibility for missing the attack? Well, I've said that after the war, there will be a thorough investigation, and everybody will have to answer some very tough questions, including myself. Do you but bear right responsibility? Now we're focused on one thing. Do you bear? We some all bear responsibility. Okay. We all I look. We're no, nobody's going to evade responsibility. It's it's, it's a non-issue. But was uh, your government not distracted? Non, Mr. Not because Prime it's Minister? a non-issue. Not because it's a non-issue, but because there will be time to deal with it, and the time that we have to deal with it is right now to win this victory after Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. after 9/11. Did you delve into that question? Of course you did afterwards. But the first thing that you did was unite the entire country, America, united to defeat the terrorists. And Israel right now, after our 29 11s, 20, proportionately, that's what we suffered, 29 11s on a single day, right now, I'm uniting the country and we're going to fight until we achieve victory. Nothing short of victory. What do you say to those who argue your administration was distracted by the months of protests due to your judicial reforms? We weren't distracted at all. There will be time to answer all these questions, and I don't want to get into that. But again, I think right now, the, rather than relitigating the past, which uh, uh, many people perhaps would like to do, but I think it's wrong. I think right now we have to focus every ounce of energy, every ounce of will and resolve 
to achieve our goal of destroying Hamas, because our future depends on it. We won't have time to relitigate the past if we don't have a future. Let's make sure we have a future. Let's defeat Hamas, which is, again, the battle to defeat the axis of terror. Because if Hamas is the integral part of this axis of terror, and you know what? Everyone is sitting on the bleachers in the Middle East and in the world, mm. and they want to see who's going to win, the good guys or the bad guys. And history doesn't favor automatically the good guys. They have to muster their resolve, their courage, their determination to defeat the bad guys. Otherwise, we get into a dark age. It's happened before in history. We must make sure it doesn't happen again. That's this what we're focused on. And I know that most Americans understand that we have to defeat Hamas for our sake and for your sake as well. Prime Minister Netanyahu, thank you so very much for all of your time this morning.